welcome to this week's uh, Trail Talk TV. Today we've got Glenn Calvert from Effect TV in the office. Glenn, thanks for coming in. Thank you for inviting me. And Glenn's going to discuss today about intelligent prospecting. And we'll go into what we mean by intelligent prospecting in a few minutes. But before we do that, let's talk about Effect TV, what they are, what they do, and what they offer the ecosystem. Glenn, just give us a bit of an overview of uh, Effective, please. Absolutely. Um, so Effective is a technology company that um, uses data to make advertising more relevant for uh, consumers and for, for advertisers. Okay. Uh, and we'll go into a bit more detail about what they do uh, during the, uh, the whiteboard session. Well, today we're talking about intelligent prospecting. Now, what is intelligent prospecting? Well, a, there's been a big trend recently for agency trading desks to kind of capture a lot of the retargeting budget and leaving prospecting open to third parties. Um, and prospecting has sort of been hit and miss for a lot of uh, these vendors. But today we're going to talk with Glenn, with Glenn about this concept of intelligent prospecting, how you can use data and sort of bespoke ads to kind of push users down the purchase funnel in an intelligent way. So Glenn, let's talk about this intelligent prospecting uh, overview. What exactly is it and what, how can we make prospecting you know, more relevant? More relevant, yeah. absolutely, absolutely. So last few years we've made great strides in making uh, advertising more efficient. Okay. Yeah. So it's been easier to uh, buy and sell um, uh, media. So on the SSP side, DSP side, and the exchange in the middle, done a great job making it very efficient. Mm. The problem is, what are we doing? We're still trading the same inefficient ad creative. Okay. Still trading the same generic display ads, mobile yeah. ads, and uh, and video ads. Uh, we're at a stage now where we can utilize data mm. to actually make every single message we serve to user relevant to mm. that individual. Um, and that's what Effective does. Yeah. So we utilize the data we have on a user to not only find the right person for a brand, but then to change the message to that individual as well and make it interesting for them. And when you do that, uh, click rates go up, conversion rates go up, and the advertiser is very happy. Okay, so let's talk about your, uh, the core of your product, which is the, the, your own, effectively your, your own DMP solution. Correct. How you pull stuff in uh, from various sources and how you rate, how you sort of use that data then to sort of, with the prospecting. Definitely, process. definitely. So um, the first thing that we built with Effective three years ago was uh, the DMP side, because we yeah. knew that the data was the most important aspect of our business and the future of, of programmatic. Um, so what we did was we looked at what interesting data is going to be um, for us. Yeah. We can kind of broadly break down um, sort of our web usage into, into three boxes. Yeah. So we have um, content, we have sort of connections and friends, and we have Mobility. Okay. So general day to day, whether you're using a, uh, a laptop, uh, phone, or, or a tablet, you're going to be looking at content that's of interest to you and purchasing things. You'll be speaking with friends and interacting with them, um, or you'll be out and about and using your mobile for certain things. Yeah. So these three sort of you know, encompass what we do on a day to day with, yeah. uh, with our digital daily lives. An effective build a DMP that could go and interact and integrate with the um, partners have the most global scale. So okay. over here you've got publishing houses, yeah. um, affiliate networks, yeah. over here you have social widgets yeah. and URL shorteners, yeah. uh, and over here you have, um, well obviously mobile, mobile players, and we get, we get location for every sort of user we see. Mm -hmm. So, directly integrate our DMP with lots and lots of global scalable third parties. Yeah. They provide us real-time data on a unique user. Right. We don't do in segments. They're absolutely useless to us. Okay. We can't do anything with them. So every time a user visits one of these, uh, one of our partners, um, we would obviously see that, that user. We understand the search terms they've used. We understand the URL they're on. We crawl every URL. So we understand yep. the content of the URL. We understand who they share it to, uh, what platform they're using. We understand where they are. Right. And all of this is on a unique user level. So right. each user had, we receive all this data. And now we can score that user based on all the data we have available on them against our advertising pool and okay. say which brand um, is this user most relevant for. Yeah. That's the first thing that we do is to, is to de determine who the most relevant user is. And we call this persona. This is our, basically our decision engine. So you've got like a scoring uh, um, point system based on if they'll convert for a brand or an advertiser basically. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. So what we do in real time is to say, what is this person doing right now? Okay. A lot of guys in the space are used to purchasing segments. So you go third to party th segments. Third party segments. Yeah. They, or you know they'll go to a publisher or or, or an exchange mm -hmm. and they'll buy segments of users. Mm -hmm. They don't know where that's coming from. They, no. they have no idea, and that's that's not useful for effective. So we need to know what's this person done from a search point of view. 
what the URL they're on, who they've shared content with, where they are, and a whole ton of other information. And all of this can be used to determine what this person is, uh, is interested in. Right. This can be matched with our, our client pool. So if we have a client over here, um, and they have users going to their website, yeah. there's a good chance we've seen those users as well. Yeah. And we have a score for that user. We look at everything they've searched, what they've browsed, what they've shared, yeah. and we can score that user. And then we can say, who else should we be serving ads to that has the exact same scoring as this individual? Well, in their network, effectively, in their social network, effectively, or in the, it connections around them. Well, you say social network, I mean, that's one aspect of the yeah. data we have available to us. Yeah, for example, uh, we might not look at their, anything with social. Mm. It could be where they are. It mm. could be the stuff they've browsed or what they've searched for. Mm. We just, social is just one aspect of the, the data we have available to us. So that's the first thing we do, is to determine who the most relevant person is yeah. for that particular brand. The most important thing we do is to say, right, well, we now know that this user is um, uh, of interest for a particular advertiser. Yeah, so we'll see this in the purchase funnel, by the way. Here's the purchase funnel. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you can say down here, so that's obviously going to be retargeting below there, and effective sits up here in the advertiser right. space. So we know this user is in market for a particular brand. Yeah. Now, normally, most people just start serving display ads to them, mm. okay? Um, because they, because of the segment they sit within. But to affect it, that, that's not good enough. We know, for example, that based on what this person searched, the sites they've been to, who they share content with, that we can now further enhance the ad creative and make it relevant to them. Mm. So how this plays is, the signals that come through in real time from here into this user are translated into the ad creative that we serve them at different elements of the funnel. So, Real-time signals serve to them as they browse on the web. So here, now we could say inside the ad creative, you're seeing this because five people have downloaded this today, mm. or five people have uh, bought this today. We see they're still in market. The next time that we see this person, we'll say to them, five people in your location in London have just bought this. Yeah. All the way down to the next stage, which could be five people who read the same review as you on, yeah. this, on this, or, or read the same laptop review, for example, yeah. ended up purchasing this. Yeah. So we translate the signals we have in real time on an individual into the unique message we serve them in the, in the marketing, in the, in, the, in the funnel. So basically, uh, these ads are served uh, as per their, uh, their journey down the purchase funnel effectively. This might be the first point of contact, it might be like a, an ad around a sort of just branding message and then fundamentally um, you sort of, um, as they move down the funnel, you start, they start seeing these ads that are relevant to them based on how far they're down there. Exactly. Okay. So we utilize data over here to enhance the ad creative over here. Yeah. And this improves performance. Okay. This, because what you're doing, so down here, is very easy for retargeters or, yeah. or, or, or Google yeah. to offer a relevant ad to an individual because yeah. the users told you exactly what they're interested in. Yeah, they're already, in, they've they've, already purchased they've it. Told they, you. Yeah, they've they've, they've, they've yeah. looked at the website, they've right. gone to the products, or they've searched, they searched on, on, on Google. Very easy then to serve a, a message that's going to be uh, of interest to them. Yeah. As you go up the funnel, the signals that people give off around what they're interested in gets disparate and yeah. it gets sporadic. Now that's what Effective aims to, to fix, is we can take the signals that we see yeah. and change the creative, make it more relevant. And if yeah. you do that, in, uh, click rates go up, performance increases. Yeah. And we can start to get to the way where we're actually offering, uh, finding new customers for advertisers, yeah. but on the same sort of metrics that we see down here. Okay, and in terms of these ads, what do they look like? How, are they, how, do, they, how do they sort of appear? What, what, what sure. sort of creatives do you use? Is it bespoke creative or how, how does it look? So for, a, uh, for an advertiser, they would provide us their standard display creative, their standard mobile ads or standard yeah. video ads, yeah. and we would serve them in real time across the web. Yeah. When we notice that a signal is relevant for a user, a flash overlay appears on top of the creative. Okay. There's different ways it can appear. The creative can fold back and the message appears, or yeah. it can appear over very quickly and, and, and move away. It can be a box, it can be a bubble, it can be a, and it, there's a, a ton of different ways that we would execute on that. The client, all the client does has to do is sign off on the, the, the creative execution of, mm. the, of the signal mm. that appears on top of the signal. Okay. And what about, how does sort of, so we're, we're saying this is intelligent prospecting, which it is in fairness, you're taking data, you're scoring, you're a, almost personalizing the message as you go down the funnel. Why does that differ from the existing sort of slapdash sort of prospecting model at the minute? Yeah, sure. So if you can consider how uh, the ecosystem would, would operate. Yeah. So you have uh, DSPs or specialized audience uh, targeting companies. Yeah. And a large part of what they'll be doing is uh, cookies on a website um, and aggregating 
groups of users yeah. into a bucket, yeah. broad buckets. Yeah. So a bunch of automotive websites, you go into the automotive segments, yeah. a bid is determined for that segment of users and then they're served ads here. They're served generic ads. Yeah. With effective, each individual user, every piece of um, keyword or signal we have around them yeah. is used in real time on them. Okay. Okay? So we don't use segments. In our system, from the DMP into the bidder, there's no segments. It has to be done on a unique user level. Okay? Yeah. That way it's real time and we can determine whether this user is going to be uh, for, for a particular brand or, mm. or not. Um, and then they're put over here. So that's very different to how the market operates. Everyone else is doing aggregation of data and what effective does is the utilization of data. Right. Okay? So we're grabbing everything around what content's being shared, what's on that website, um, uh, a ton of information. Mm. The keywords there are all utilized to determine what we actually put inside the creative. Mm. That's good. And um, are you? What's the plans for this? Then are you going to roll this out as a sort of a, a piece of technology in the next twelve months to, to make it available for the, the ecosystem? Is that the plan around here, or how, how do you how do you see this evolving? So, um, Effective is currently a UK-based um, business, and we we operate um, uh, sort of across multiple markets. Yep. Part of our technology means that we can actually serve ads and understand data in different markets. Yep. We don't have to be doing semantics and, uh, and natural language processing. Okay. Our one of our patents enables us to actually understand content without actually having to go and do the, the translation. Right. Um, so we do that all from London across, across Europe. The next stage for Effective is, is going to the US, um, where we also want to take this form of advertising and prospecting into that market. Mm -hmm. Once we've got scale in, the, in Europe and, and the US, yeah. we'll consider then taking this piece which is a very valuable piece for Effective, is the utilization of data and making this a platform that others then can then utilize. Yeah. So that's currently utilized by Effective for um, signal ads. Yeah. We'll then let these guys, the data suppliers, use yeah. it for their own sales teams yeah. uh, and also their own analytics. Very badly spelled. Oh, sorry. Uh, and then obviously the later part will be other buyers and sellers in the ecosystem. Yeah. And that can be the, that's going to be the long-term uh, play for Effective. Okay. All right, Glenn, thanks very much for coming in uh, and explaining the product and also giving us an overview of intelligent prospecting. Thanks for your time. All right, uh, and that was Trader Talk TV, and we'll see you again soon. Thanks. Thank you.